So as far as the management of patients with the COVID-19 infection is concerned, I would like to focus more on the patients who are coming to the ICU basically because the ICU is the place where the procedures are happening and you know the critical role of uh, we physicians, the intensivist and the physician assistants is very, very important. Try to understand what is the oxygen status. Is the patient hypoxemic? This first question should come to your mind. This is how we should be able to triage the patient. If the patient has severe hypoxemia, especially the saturation is less than 92%, treat that patient with the oxygen. Start with nasal prongs. Nasal prongs oxygen can be given up to 6 liters, not beyond that. If, if we have to give oxygen support more than 6 liters, we have to place a Hudson mask with which we can give at least 10 to 15 liters of oxygen. But with Hudson mask also we can give FiO2 or oxygen support by around 60% only. If, if the patient need of oxygen is more than 60%, then we can use non rebreathing mask. Uh, Hudson mask is attached with the uh, rebreathing um, bag where uh, we will be able to provide at least 88 to 90% or 100% of oxygen support. But for that, the flows, for that, the flows should be as high as possible. You know, the, the flows can be uh, around uh, more than 15 liters. If the, if the flow of the gases or oxygen through that NRBM mask is uh, less than 15 liters, probably uh, we will not be able to do justice and there may be a rebreathing. There may be more and more CO2 retention uh, and that may, be, that may be more harmful to the patient. So that's why it is very essential that, you know, we should have uh, appropriate oxygen delivery through the different devices. Even Hudson mask also has variable uh, oxygen, uh, you know, um, uh, venturi, venturis. Uh, which can be applied and with which we can titrate oxygen support. Okay, maybe 20%, 30%, 40%, 60%. 60 Depending upon the need of the patient, the oxygen support can be titrated. So the Hudson mask can be used and uh, if the Hudson mask is not helping you because it gives you only 60% of the oxygen, we can use an RBM, non-rebreathing mask, which will be able to help you with more and more uh, FiO2 requirements like 100%. If the patient needs 100% FiO2, probably these are the patients who can be benefited. But uh, those patients you know, who are remaining hypoxic even with NRBM, whose respiratory rate is high, and those patients where uh, they, you find air hunger and they have respiratory distress, these are the patients who may not get benefited with uh, a uh, non rebreathing mask. They will need high flow nasal oxygen or BiPAP mask. High flow nasal oxygen is a device way, with which uh, we can give oxygen up to 6 liters. With nasal prong, we can give up only up to 6 liters of oxygen. With high flow nasal oxygen, we can give up to 60 li liters of oxygen. But the uh, the catch here is the oxygen that we are giving may cause a lot of dryness of the nasal mucosa and all that. So that's why the humidification of the gases that is given through high flow nasal oxygen is very, very important. It has to be humidified. So that's why high flow nasal oxygen machine comes up with a humidifier where the temperature is kept around 35 to 36 degrees so that, you know, warm gases can be delivered and there will be, uh, um, you know, um, no dryness of the nose and uh, no, no crusting. And uh, patient also will feel comfortable if if the humidified gases are delivered. Mm -hmm. So these these uh, devices like uh, high flow nasal oxygen or putting patient on BiPAP will generate a lot of aerosols. So we have to be very mindful. We have to have proper you know PPEs and face shield and N95 mask that will protect us from aerosols that are generated. So any patient who cannot maintain oxygen levels with high flow nasal oxygen device with the nasal prongs he is not able to maintain these are the candidates who should be who sh who needs higher oxygen requirement higher flow of gases like you can just give 60 liter but you cannot give peep okay in a covid what happens in covid ARDS uh, you know the alveolar filled with the fluid the some of the alveolar collapse it, it becomes very difficult to open up these alveolar so you need to give pressurized uh, gases or flow of gases which will keep the alveolar open. When the alveolar open, the air exchange, uh, oxygen, oxygen exchange uh, can happen. Means oxygen comes to the alveolar and from alveolar it is absorbed in the capillaries. But if the alveolar are filled with the fluid, uh, they may not contribute in oxygenation. That is how these patients become more hypoxemic. So that's why you need devices where you can provide higher PEEP. Okay, and that is more efficient with the non-invasive mask. And that's why those patients who are uh, even in moderate category, uh, those uh, oxygen requirements are very high, can be benefited with non-invasive ventilation. So, 
so first question that we ask to our patient when or we ourselves as well so is the patient hypoxemic if the patient is hypoxemic we need to provide these oxygen devices but if the patient is even not breathing with comfortably with non invasive mask it means the patient is either fatigue or he he needs rest because what happens when the patient becomes tachypneic breathless restless uh, he is using his accessory muscles muscles the intercostal muscles and diaphragm uh, when it is used excessively if the patient is breathing at a rate of more than 35 it will get fatigue there will be uh, you know the muscles the diaphragm intercostal muscles accessory muscles will get fatigue and later on they will have a uh, respiratory compromise and probably they may have the respiratory you know uh, you know uh, they uh, they may have uh, you know uh, arrest respiratory arrest also so to prevent that you need to give rest now uh, those patients who are on bipap who are not able to maintain oxygen levels and they have respiratory distress these are the patient whom we intubate put the tube in oral cavity and put them on ventilator and provide high oxygen support so that is how to give rest to the lungs we put the patient on ventilator we need to intubate we need to put a tube in the oral cavity and i will also emphasize how do we put the tube and what are the different you know monitoring uh, you know uh, Uh, devices that can help you to assess uh, 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 the oxygen status and ventilation parameters of these patients. So uh, uh, these patients basically, if they are on oxygen devices, they are not eating, drinking well, and uh, probably uh, that's why their nutrition gets comprom compromised. They are not drinking well. They remain dehydrated, uh, and uh, that's why. Uh, when the patient we, we assess the patient oxygenation is compromised you try to resuscitate them give them fluids but we do not do not give over zealous fluid resuscitation if we give over zealous fluid resuscitation that will flood the lungs and again may compromise the oxygen uh, oxygenation of the patient so that's why whenever we are giving fluid judiciously use these fluids and use uh, it optimally as well to, in order to resuscitate optimally so and then at the same time when the patients come up to come to us uh, especially second week onward first week onward 10 to 12 days have gone so these patients are likely to catch secondary bacterial infection along so antibacterial agents can be used like azithromycin can be used initially but if the patient uh, with mild infection but if the patient has moderate to severe infection beta lactam antibiotics like piperacillin tazobactam can be used and for severe infection who are hemodynamically unstable the carbapenems can be used okay and then uh, that is how the choice of antibiotic will will be dependent upon the severity of the sim sim symptoms or presence of a bacterial infection which will guide us to help uh, these patients and then if the patient is having mild symptoms sh we should use uh, 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 we should use our restrictive strategies for steroids we should not use steroids and that is how overzealous or enthusiastic or indiscriminate use of steroids has led to the compromised uh, immunity of the patient and they are likely to develop fungal infection we have seen a lot of mucormycosis coming up and the high incidence of mucormycosis is basically because of the indiscriminate of the steroid use of the steroids so that's why the patient who are mildly infected probably they don't need steroids it is this mild moderate to severe infections where the steroids can be used and uh, steroids have been tried tested by the different studies and they, it has shown that if you use steroids there can be reduction in the mortality by 6% so whenever we are treating patient with the fluid or antimicrobials or steroids we should monitor our lipids blood pressure heart rate and saturation and urine output and the consciousness level these six parameters should be monitored all the time and then uh, most of the patient who admit uh, who get admitted in the hospital will require uh, oxygen support but how much oxygen are we overdoing with the oxygen Uh, support also we need to prevent because oxygen is also a drug and it it also has its toxicity if we use oxygen support more than 60% for longer duration it may also have oxygen toxicity it also causes absorption atelectasis because oxygen doesn't stay in the alveolar for long time it is this nitrogen which will which will remain in the alveolar and oxygen gets diffused inside the capillaries okay but but if we use 100% oxygen all the oxygen will get diffused from the alveolar into the capillaries and the alveolar will collapse so that's why if you use higher oxygen that will cause absorption at electrolysis so that's a when to stop and when to reduce oxygen and how much oxygen saturation we should uh, accept is also very important 88 to percent 88 to 92% oxygen saturation is very very important but if 
the oxygen saturation is not um, uh, maintaining we should inform our team the team should respond and um, we should try to use different modes of oxygen support from nasal prong to hypoglycemic oxygen to bipap even nebulizations can be used for some patient who are who develop bronchospasm uh, the nebulizations with bronchodilators like uh, uh, astelin or duolin or steroid nebulizations can also be used so but also at the same time uh, comorbidities also should be taken into consideration uh, elderly patients and uh, patients with the comorbidities like hypertension diabetes or ckd so our immunocompromised patient they have high uh, you know chances of developing covid 19 infection and the second parameter to assess the severity of the disease is sofa score so whenever the patient comes to us in the admission within 24 hour what are the vital parameters pulse bp heart rate saturation urine output consciousness and uh, creatinine and oxygen levels pf ratio oxygen saturation if if these parameters are affected this patient sofa score is high and these patients will need hospital hospitalization and icu admission uh, for the, their definitive care and at the same time we should monitor c reactive proteins and ferritin levels and it is also seen that those patients uh, with the age of more than 65 70 years their mortality is very very high first due to their comorbidity second due to the viral pro 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 prolonged viral pro pro progression of the disease and the third uh, is, third factor is probably inattention this patient elderly patient get neglected okay they they may not uh, receive prompt treatment in time and probably they may not be able to uh, have the symptoms okay so that's why these are the patients who are likely to die and what uh, what is seen in italy is like majority of the patients from the age group of around more than 70 years their fatality rate is very very high but in india uh, with this covid pandemic even, even young patients are also getting affected and the case fatality rate in younger patient is also seen very high so those patients uh, uh, who have spent uh, almost nine to ten days uh, of the uh, stay in the ward or at home and uh, they are becoming more symptomatic with uh, hypoxemia or respiratory failure or patients who develop myocarditis or heart failure or acute kidney injury or secondary bacterial infection or DIC. These are the candidates <coughs> who need critical care management, oxygen support, supportive care, fluid management and respiratory care. A basic care is very, very important. We should focus on basic care, routine monitoring, oxygen support, fluid, nutritional support, judicious use of antibiotics and and uh, uh, avoidance of steroids in mild cases and use of steroids in the uh, severe uh, severe COVID-19 infection is all that very, very important and timely prompt attention to the hypoxemic patient and providing oxygen support through different oxygen devices like nasal prong, BiPAP or ventilator. We is very very important and different medications are used in this covid 19 infection like anti-malarials which are not used nowadays antivirals like remdesivir as already discussed remdesivir has a role to prevent further viremia viral uh, transcription mrna transcription can be prevented then but it has to it has a role only in the early phase may not be in the later phase but the studies have shown you know the efficacy of remdesivir uh, is with the varying success uh, some centers have good success, some centers have not uh, uh, documented anything like it is not specific to uh, COVID-19 infection. This is an antiviral which is used for adenovirus or other viral infections or influenza. Uh, so basically, um, but this medication is being tried here and uh, especially those patients who are hypoxemic in the early stage of the disease, probably these patients have got benefited, but those who have presented late, probably they are not benefited. And then monoclonal antibodies like you know, Tocilizumab or rituximab or uh, you know uh, uh, different agents that are available, interferon. These are not found to be very useful. Convalescent plasma mm -hmm. is also used. And like those patients who don't have antibody response, their convalescent plasma can be used, but it has also not shown any benefits. 